nothing. The Bible tells us in Romans and in Revelation that there's going to be a parenthetical period, a timeout period in the history of God's dealing with the Jews. That's our age. That's the church age. We're living in it right now. But it's drawing to a close. And the, the seven year period that completes the 490 years is right here. And the prince who is to come is going to make a decree or a covenant with Israel for mutual protection. He's going to be a world powerful leader who says, we'll step in, we will protect you. And he's going to look like a wonderful savior for the world. He's going to have a peace plan that Washington can't get past. <laughs> and everybody's going to say, oh man, this guy is smart. Why didn't we think of that before? But in the middle of that week, he's going to reveal himself for who he really is. And the book of Revelation details this Antichrist, and by the way, his name is not going to be Antichrist. It's going to be Joe Good or something like that. They're going to think he's wonderful. Bill Wonderful. He's going to be the president of this confederacy, but he is going to begin to take on an Antiochus Epiphanes character. He is going to uh, bring in the abomination of desolation. He will declare himself God. He will declare war on monotheists and Christians and Jews in particular. He will try to destroy them. But here Gabriel says, at the end of this three and a half year period, he is going to be destroyed. Mm -hmm. The one who made desolate. What uh, is that found in, in Revelation? You know what chapter? Well, Antichrist chapter, main chapter is 13. 13. And then you're going to get Armageddon in 16. The return of Christ in 19. And the thing to remember about the book of Revelation, it does not set out a strict chronology. It has flashbacks and flash forwards. When you study the book of Revelation, you have to know that it doesn't follow a strict chronology. It'll tell about Antichrist, then it'll tell about his defeat, and then it'll go to 19 and say Christ comes then and defeats him, but it's talking about that defeat in chapter 16. Okay? So those three chapters, 13, 16, and 19, deal with those things. And then... After this one who made desolate is done for, then Christ is the one who does him in. He will bring in this everlasting period uh, of righteousness. And by the way, it doesn't end here. There's a thousand years on earth, but it continues on with a new heaven. Heaven and a new earth. That's how it works. Yeah. So, all this means is that if you're on the side of Jesus, the true Messiah, you're on a winning team. Amen. That's, that's the Lord. Lord. Now, we will have a new heaven and a new earth. Yes. Okay, now, everybody that's in God, God people. They're not all going to be in heaven. Some of them going to be there from the new earth. Or what? No, well, the heavenly city, New Jerusalem, now we're talking Revelation, now not Daniel, mm -hmm. comes down above the earth. It's described in chapter 20, book of Revelation. It's a 1,500 mile cube with doors on each side. Twelve layers of precious stones represent the foundations in it. And it is above the earth. And the saints come and go from the new city to the new heaven and new earth. That's all in the book of Revelation. But the new heaven and the new earth come after the millennium. Yes. Hmm. Yeah, the Well, if, if we date it, we don't know exactly. <coughs> if we date it from the birth of Christ, we're tempted to say we're already past 2,000 years. But if we 
dated from the cross, the 2,000 year period will extend to the year 2032. But I mean, where did we get the 2,000 years? I mean, how do we know? We don't know that that's 2,000 years. Well, we know that it's it's been 2,000 years right. since the cross. Right. Since so, Christ. But, but that could be 3,000 years. Okay, yeah. It, it that's could the be. variable could be. in the, in the 409 years. And let me just say that some biblical prophets, people who study prophecy, suggest that this whole thing is, is a plan of God and it is built on a 7,000 year period. This is a guess, Jordan. It's, it's a theory, okay? Because nowhere in the Bible does it say this. But we know that there was 2,000 years from Adam to Abraham. You can get that in the Bible. You can put the years there. Then there was 2,000 years from Abraham until Christ. And we know that there's 1,000 years of the millennium here. And you're right, this makes this a variable. But if, if they are right, the theorists, that the seven represents the, you know, God's completion, it's his number. If 7,000 represents the period of, of God's history, then it would mean this age would be about 2,000 years long. That's yet to be seen. You're right. But, but dispensationalists, that's called dispensational prophecy and premillennialism. They'll fight you tooth and nail to say that this 7,000 years is, is what God's working on. That's his time. <clears throat> well, I'm saying it has been 2,000 years. And when we approach the year 2032, we ought to be curious about it. Like Daniel was. Okay, Lord, you've said seven years. So maybe this is the time. But Jesus never answered the question. He said, nobody knows the time except the Father. But he did say this. You can know the signs. Wars and rumors of wars. Earthquakes and famines. Wickedness and crime. And, so, and we've seen an escalation of all of that, you know, in the last few years. So there are many who are saying the signs are leading us to believe that this 2,000 years is drawing. Now are the saints who went up in the rapture just up above all that and, and uh, uh, watching it all go on or are they down in, in the middle of that? Well the rapture takes place here. <clears throat> the rapture of the church. Uh -huh according to Scripture. And there's a big discussion on who's going in the rapture, the first great question. But the church, the faithful church, let's put it that way, the faithful church will be taken to be with the Lord. And then they're going to come back with the Lord at His coming. It says in Revelation 19. So yeah, we're going to go up and uh, I guess we're going to... Uh, Learn some rules of heaven. <laughs> We're going through boot camp. We're going to uh, get a new name. We're going to learn a new language. We're going to, but we're going to come back with the Lord for administration in this millennial period. His saints will come and rule with Him for that thousand years. It's a very interesting thing to think about. So yes, and the first. This is called the first resurrection, and it has four parts. We'll discuss that later. But there's going to be some taken here, some taken here, and then two groups taken here. And that's the first resolution. They were saying already that uh, President Obama will be the last president. So, and words like that, you know, it's the end that it's getting close. Well, Pope John Paul, who passed away, uh, he was a real... Bible prophecy man. And he believed that the prophecies in Revelation about the false prophet, uh, he had a whole scheme and he thought we were close to that. 
And Billy Graham was good friends with him and did some writing about what John Paul thought. But it was interesting to know that John Paul, a Roman Catholic pope, believed that the false prophet would be a pope. Uh, one who was, you know, how do we put it? You know, how he, he was a real corrupt guy. Say so, so that again now. Pope John Paul believed that the false prophet would be a pope. Mm. Oh. Yes. That's interesting. Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah. Well, in the history of the papacy, there have been some corrupt ones. You know? Yeah, yeah. No, but I mean, that's true. That's, that's, that's been a. That's been a Point made by the Protestant Church for a long time. Oh yeah, but I've never heard that made from a, from a Catholic. Yeah, if you'll search it out, John Paul II's view on the false prophet. If you Google it, yeah. you, I'm sure you'll find something. Yeah. And uh, because I read it somewhere back there, and as y'all know, I've been out of the loop for a while, but I've been teaching eighth grade. <laughs> but now. Let me just say, I'm going to come back and write this up there because the rest of chapter, of these chapters, 10, 11, and 12, are going to refer to this too. But that little section, if you mark it in your Bible, that's the most important section of biblical prophecy that there is. Because Daniel asks, and Gabriel tells him, from this point, here's what's going to happen the rest of the way. And Israel's history will be completed in this period and it will bring in everlasting righteousness. Well, we might have more questions next time as you think about it. And I might think of something I should have said. <laughs> so, bear with me. But I'm sure based on uh, what the Bible says, that's a fairly accurate memory of what they <clears throat> received from Gabriel. Yes, sir. Now we've got, we'll have a first resurrection and a second resurrection. Mm -hmm. Okay, what's the timeline between the first one and the second one? Well, the first one starts with the rapture before the, before the tribulation period. Mm -hmm. And the second resurrection is not until the end of the millennium. So oh. it's 2,000 years. Ooh, basically. Uh -huh. So, yeah, I mean, good. not 2,000. 1,007 years later. 17. Okay. So, yeah, the second resurrection is the resurrection yeah, I'm of the dead. Yeah. That's, why. That's the resurrection of the dead. That's different. The first resurrection is for the believers, and the second is for the Let's have a second And then we'll talk. Father, we thank you for the word that was given to Daniel in the fervency, the dignity, and the piety of Daniel Jesus. Because through him we receive this word from heaven. We just thank you for his life. Yes, Lord. And Father, we pray that we may ponder all of this on our heart. Because truly, Lord, we know that no man knows the day. But this scheme, oh Father, gives us hope and assurance for the future. And even more, may we pray tonight, bring in your kingdom. May your kingdom come. And we pray that we might somehow contribute to that happening. Go with us to our homes. Bring us back here to worship again next Sunday and to learn and to pass on this information to someone who does not have hope. This is our prayer in Christ's name. Amen. Amen.